Hello, friends. Welcome to Saga Thursday. I'm your host, Raj, as always. Today, we are continuing with the Age of Magic. So we took a look at the battle report last time, the exhibition game. Got some juicy nuggets. So we're going to circle back around. Uh, this is labeled as a how to play Saga Age of Magic video. But it's probably really meant more for Saga veterans who want to know the, the juicy details about the new supplement versus I'm um, interested in Age of Magic and I'm just getting into the game because of it. This probably won't be the best video for you. There's How to Play Saga 2nd Edition Parts 1 and 2. So if you take a look at those, watch them through. You could probably come back to this video then and sort of pick up um, the rest of the details pertinent to the new edition. So obviously there's a lot going on in this book when you're adding wizards and dragons and such to a game primarily based off historical type uh, stuff. So uh, the book is different. So the other supplements uh, build off the core rules, add a slew of factions, but otherwise don't really add new stuff per se. You might have an interesting unit or two and some, some of the factions, but that's about it. So this new bug is adding tons of new units. Every troop roster is you know, 20 or 25 uh, troop choices available between all the equipment. So you really have a lot of choice in the Age of Magic. So this video, we're going to tackle the new units essentially and go through them one by one with a couple of caveats. One, I'm not going to touch the sorcerers yet because I think the magic is going to be a whole episode on its own. We can take a look at that because uh, you can probably talk for, for some time just purely off the spells and everything else like that. And then I'm going to not delve into the factions either. They, the factions have specific units, legendary units, um, special army types that are available that grant army-wide bonuses. So that's sort of going to be another video in and of itself too, I think, um, better than trying to tackle it all at once. So I'm just going to be hitting the generic units that every army can take for the most part, and we're just going to get right into it. So obviously the Warriors, Levy, Hearthguard, Warlord, that exists pretty much the same. A lot of armies have a lot of variety in the equipment they can take. Most of the lords can be mounted. They can be mounted on a great big beast, which I'll talk about. So that stuff's pretty much the same. You know, a point for 12 levy, 8 warriors, 4 hearth guard. That is the same. So we'll just keep that in mind as we move forward to a new hero type, which is the lieutenant. And he is a interesting choice because he is actually only a half a point essentially so there's a new kind of mechanic in age of magic that's essentially half points the wording is um, not quite like that but essentially you can take a lieutenant by dropping uh, two hearth guards from your list so you take eight hearth guards and if you drop two then you could take a lieutenant um, that's just one of them you could take Drop two hearth guards, four warriors, six levies, or a creature. So you have a lot of flexibility there. But because of the minimum troop sizes, there is you know kind of a, a strategy there. So you couldn't take four hearth guard and drop two to take a lieutenant because then you have two hearth guard that cannot form a legal unit, so you cannot use them. So there's a little bit of that, but essentially we're working with some half points here. So the lieutenant is a pretty cool guy. He doesn't generate a Saga dice, so uh, that needs to be clear, clear up front. So when in Age of Magic, when you're building your lists, which are eight-point lists, by the way, I don't know if I made that clear in the exhibition video, um, it's not going to be as easy as counting up all your units to know which uh, units generate Saga dice because that's not always going to be the case for heroes and stuff like that. So in any case... The Lieutenant, he's a hero. He's armor 5, aggression 4, and melee 2 for shooting. He has determination, presence, resilience 1. Um, he does not have bodyguards, so that's clear. Um, 
And then he has a faction special rule, which we would have to get into each individual faction. So there's six different lieutenants out there. So, for example, the Horde lieutenant, he just has extra attacks because he's a real barbaric type guy. The uh, Lords of the Wild is kind of like a pathfinder if he's in a... A uh, unit of terrain, then your unit can move through the terrain without penalty. So that's kind of the the little flavor there behind that guy. So the lieutenants could be could be pretty cool, uh, depending on the faction whether you want to take those or not. But for a half point, um, and he's got determination, so he activates on his own. Could be could be a good pick. Okay, so we're gonna get into the creatures now. So the creatures are what the kind of ogre sized. Um, what we're thinking of as those type of things from other other games. So I'm trying to find the base size on these guys. They must fit within a 50 by 50 millimeter square if they're uh, bipedal. Um, if they're quadrupedal or flying, they can fit on an 80 by 50 millimeter rectangle. So anything smaller than that. So one thing to point out is these bases are probably smaller than the current Games Workshop bases. So you might just want to keep that in mind if you are using the new Age of Sigmar models for some of these things. The Games Workshop standard base might be too big to be like legal according to the rules. But um, if you're playing with your friends, there, there shouldn't be any issue really from using bases that are necessarily too big. I mean, the rules are in there because you, you have to put something in there, obviously. You can't have somebody with a base the size of my head. So they have to make the call somewhere. Uh, but if you do play in events and stuff like that, you'd probably want to make sure that you do have the correct base size. But the creatures are split into three different types. And we'll see this echoed in the monsters as well. Essentially, you have the generic bipeds, which could be uh, minotaurs, ogres, guys like that. And then the quadrupeds, which are more animalistic, giant bears, uh, bulls, <laughs> war beasts, whatever. But it could also, modeling-wise, I think it could be uh, guys on really giant horses, you know, kind of demonic mounts or something like that. So both of those guys... Of uh, those two types are very similar, so I'm going to kind of lump them together. Uh, all the creatures generate a saga dice, so just be clear about that. They're armor four, and they have aggression five, five attacks each in close combat. And then if they do shoot, they have one dice each. Uh, so on the surface, pretty powerful dudes. They have a couple special rules. They have imposing, which is a new rule in the Age of Magic. And this is the rule that um, a couple things. I believe it stops you from closing ranks. You cannot benefit from cover because you're so big. But the main thing is that you can be uh, up to four fatigues before you are exhausted. So that's kind of a special rule that you're going to see uh, repeated throughout here for all the big guys. They have presence, so they count as more guys than they actually are, which makes sense. And lastly, their resilience won, so pretty cool. We've seen a, a few units in Saga and with abilities that can get resilience. So with being able to go to up to four fatigues, um, before being exhausted and then like start taking mandatory damage. Um, even though they're armor four, you're going to tend to leave those fatigues on them. So um, yeah, they're not as easy to kill as you think. And that's going to be the struggle here with these guys and the monsters trying to figure out when to use their fatigue and when to leave it on. So the difference between the bipeds and the quadrupeds is the quadrupeds are essentially cavalry. They have a rule called Swift that essentially makes them count as cav. Um, so their armor is reduced by one against shooting, but otherwise they're pretty much the same and move quick. So no reason not to take those if, if that's what you fancy. Lastly, we have flyers. So flying is really cool in this new age of magic. So flyers are similar to cavalry. They take an armor hit and then they actually take an aggression hit. Now, that's not a blanket rule for flying, but I've noticed all the flyers 
have lower aggression than their uh, land versions, so to speak. So the flying creatures are aggression four instead of compared to five for the other guys. So flight is a really cool ability. I kind of teased at it in the exhibition report, and I didn't really get into it too much. But flyers, they if you're going to fly, you cannot go into terrain. But you, you, the way it reads is you can still walk into terrain without penalty. So it's not quite the same as cavalry where they're just completely hosed going into terrain. So these guys can go into terrain if they choose to kind of use their land speed. The... Um, they move fast, they move the long or the two medium sticks. They can fly over units and terrain without penalty. And that includes enemy units. But if you're charging over enemy units, you take a fatigue for each unit that you charge over. So um, obviously being able to go straight over is a powerful ability. Going after the wizards or other weak heroes in the back is an option. So you're going to take some fatigues going over the enemy to try to make those moves happen, which I think is fair, makes sense. The last bit of flight, which is really cool, and we did do it in the exhibition battle report, was when you maneuver, you can take them off the board and then put them wherever you want as long as they're over 12 inches away. So it's essentially, it's an unlimited move, but you have to end over a long, uh, just like a normal maneuver. So if the enemy spends you, if you have a fatigue, they can spend the fatigue to reduce your movement and it basically cancels that out. So um, you might use fatigue on someone to essentially cancel that kind of flying move of theirs. So those are the creatures. And I don't believe I said it, but creatures are two for one point in uh, Age of Magic. And then you also have the option with the lieutenant to sort of add more creatures by dropping some warriors or a levy um, and so the creatures are in units of two to six strong so uh, not too shabby those guys let's get into the monsters so monsters are a single figure there's three types again and they cost one point each the first kind of monster is called a behemoth which is probably a more animalistic type creature does generate a saga dice is armor four like the creatures it has 14 attacks which is amazing uh aggression is zero for shooting purposes um not that it has a shooting attack uh, it is uh, imposing it has presence and resilience too so super resilient if you played in Saga, anything Resilience 2, you know, is a pain in the ass to try to kill. So monsters fall within that category. And then it has a rule called Primitive, which Primitive basically is the equivalent of mercenaries from the main Saga rulebook. And what I mean by that is they cannot be uh, activated by advanced Saga abilities, and they cannot be... Um, trigger advanced saga abilities for melee or shooting stuff like that so they're kind of on their own and uh, you know they have so many attacks they don't need to be buffed which is nice so sometimes you wish you'd had a hearth guard unit you could buff but these guys are kind of dice efficient and that you can send them out there and they'll beat stuff up without necessarily needing to be buffed by abilities uh, the last thing primitive actually has one more thing where each fatigue you have reduces your attacks by one. So um, if a big behemoth right here with four fatigue, because he has imposing, uh, goes into a fight, he's exhausted, so he's going to get minus one to his attack rolls, but he's also going to get minus four attacks for having four fatigues. So that is the, the behemoth-type creatures. Titans, these are the next type of monster. Very similar. They generate a Saga die. They are armor 5, which is great. They generate 12 attacks, so almost as many. So you're thinking, well, yeah, armor 5 is better than armor 4, and you're only losing 2 attacks. So um, I think I'm going to probably take this guy if I can. But he also has the same abilities as the Behemoth, but he's also slow. So he only moves and charges short instead of medium. So... Uh, that's a pretty huge difference, and over the course of a battle, um, could really 
tack on the activations that you need to use on this guy to get him in. So uh, both pros and cons between those two. The last one is the Scourge, which is the uh, flying dragons, anything that flies, uh, worms, wyverns, mana cores, stuff like that. So generates a Saga die, armor four, and this is, even though it flies, it's you know included in the profile. So it's armor four against shooting and in melee. And it's aggression 10 only. So a little weaker yet than the other two. But it does have four shooting attacks, which it generates those from a breath attack. So a breath attack is another special rule in the Age of Magic. And I believe certain battle boards might be able to trigger it as well. But it's a, a shooting attack range medium that uh, essentially you can do once per turn. I believe it's for free after a movement ability. Um, it's just a free shooting attack, which does not generate a fatigue. So, yes, you can do it once per turn. So, um yeah, so we've gone through a few new rules already, but they do all fit on a single page at the back of the book. So, uh, And then all the stats for, I think, everything fits on a single page at the back of the book. So uh, a lot of new stats and stuff to learn, but uh, it's, it's not too much. Um, after that second test game, I kind of feel that I, I know most of the stuff here. Uh, the last kind of new units I want to get into are the War Machines, which are... Um, Pretty, pretty much new. I mean, we had the Manu Ballista from the Atheist and Arthur, which I can't remember offhand the rules for that to know if these are similar or not. But uh, War Machines are pretty limited. Most of the factions can only take one or one type. Um, so they're not going to be super common, but you got to put them in there, uh, obviously, for a game like this. So there's three kinds once again, and these are essentially a half point each. So you have to drop warriors or levy to recruit one of these guys. So you have to drop four warriors or six levy. So you got three kinds. So the first one is a static war machine, which it's cumbersome. It moves very short, but it has a powerful shot. So it gets plus one to its attack dice. It's armor three, four against shooting. Aggression is one in melee, uh, four for shooting if it's within long range and then if it's over long range it's two dice um, so it does have presence it does have resilience so this is going to be essentially a single base and you could probably put like little guys on there to represent the crew uh, however you want to do that um, but um, it can only be activated to shoot once per turn so i don't know this seems <laughs> seems pretty limited but i'm sure uh, plus one bonus to your attack dice. And I'm assuming that, yeah, I don't believe there's any restrictions for Saga dice or anything like that as far as the advanced abilities. So you could uh, potentially on certain boards have abilities which can really soup these guys up, probably more so than their stat line really indicates. So the next type of war machine is a mobile war machine. So this one can move around like it wants to. Uh, doesn't generate a Saga Dice. It's armor four, again, melee and shooting. It's got two melee attacks. It's got four shooting attacks. It's got resilience. It's, it's also unarmed. It's got presence, and it also has firearms, which let's get to the, the new equipment here, firearms, which... Uh, we'll need to jump around in the book here, but essentially firearms are kind of like crossbows in that they get plus one to their attack roll. Um, yes, firearms. They're a range of long. They'll reduce the armor and of the unit using them in both melee and shooting. And then um, if the... T okay. So you only get a plus one bonus to your attack dice if you're within medium. And then it, in addition, if the target is within medium or less, the shooting attack inflicts at least one casualty. They will take a fatigue. So sort of similar to the naphtha bombs of uh, the Age of Crusades. And 
these are pretty restricted. Um, you can take infantry in some of the factions, like the Great Kingdom can take firearms, but most of the factions do not have access to these firearms. So you have four firearm shots on this little mobile platform here, so that's pretty cool. And lastly, you've got a flying war machine, which is coming out of left field here. Uh, I was very surprised to see that in here. But, uh, yeah, so your dwarven uh, battle balloons and whatever empire contraptions are represented here. So doesn't generate saga dice again. Armor 4 again. Uh, aggression 1 in melee, 4 for shooting. And the way it shoots is it has a breath attack. So a steam cannon or flamethrower or something like that. It flies naturally and then has presence, resilience 1, and is also unarmed like those other guys. The base sizes, it must fit within 150 millimeter by 60 millimeter rectangle. So that's pretty huge. That's quite big. Um, so those are the main kind of new units. The new equipment options, again, are the firearms. Some troops can get those. You're going to see heavy weapons, bows, composite bows, slings, uh, all the old stuff I've seen throughout the various army lists. Um, you can mount troops on animals in this one. So um, essentially horses. It follows the same rules as horses. Um, the um, There is a mount called Beast, which a hero or warlord can take depending on the various lists. So in the exhibition battle report, my warlord was on a mounted beast who was also flying. So he takes an armor hit on top of it. But... Uh, to, just to go over that, if you take a like a normal beast who moves around on foot, the move distance is medium, but it charges long as long as it is entirely in open terrain. The melee aggression goes up by two, so on a warlord it goes from eight to ten. Counts as a mounted unit. You have resilience two, which is awesome. You gain imposing, so you're exhausted at four fatigues. Uh, you cannot take any special equipment like a heavy weapon or anything like that. You lose We Obey and Bodyguards. So you're not, um, you're losing a little uh, kind of utility there. You cannot move your own units around and then you cannot have Hearth Guards take your hits for you. But with Resilience 2, I think more of them makes up for that. And then you can also fly uh, optionally if your army has that selection. So that would just reduce his armor by one against shooting and then you know, essentially you follow the flight rules for movement. So Warlord on a Beast must fit within an 80 millimeter by 50 millimeter rectangle. Um, so that's about covers it for all the new rules that we have in the, the Age of Magic. So I want to do another video about the Sorcerers and the Magic phase, the Magic dice. Well, there isn't a Magic phase, but there are Magic dice that you get to use. And it... it does work quite differently than Saga Dice, I will say, in some respects. Um, and then, of course, the factions. I could talk a long time about the factions. I might have a general overview kind of video just talking about some of the options for folks. But otherwise, you know, it might just end up being the standard kind of faction reviews that we've seen previously, really delving into those. But if you do not know, it's the Great Kingdoms. The which is kind of empire, civilizations, good or bad. The lords of the wild, which are the natural forces, uh, good or bad. Again, dryads or beast men. There's the horde, which are barbarian, uh, chaotic type fellows. Could be orcs as well, marauders, that kind of stuff. You've got the undead. There could be good, good undead out there. I mean, I think people thought the Games Workshop Tomb Kings were good guys. I'm not sure about that, but I believe so. You could have good or bad undead out there as well. You've got Otherworld, which is the uh, extra planar be being, beings, typically uh, demons, most likely, but it could be angelic forces or uh, weird stuff like that. And then the last one is the Under, Under Earth Fellows. I believe that's the proper title, the Masters of the Under Earth. So these are underground guys, and they have like a more mechanical bent to them. So dwarves, um, your goblins with their gadgets, the, the rat men, the skaven, of course, would fall into that. 
Um, so those are the, the six factions if you, if you weren't aware of that. So uh, hopefully this gave you a good overview of the new troop types. And I think it's enough information. You, I guess you don't have the new boards, but you could break out your Viking boards or something like that and add ogres and giants and dragons to your current games of Saga. And until you have the new boards, I, I think you could get some mileage out of that. So... Overall, really impressed. The number of new rules, um, you know, flight, imposing, primitive, firearms. We were, we were going to get there eventually with some of the other ages coming up. So um, nothing specific to that. I guess the war machines, there is a lot to chew on once you get through it. And But there's so many options out there for folks to play with. You, you really can take whatever figs you want, line them up, and then just go to town. So... Um, really excited about it and more excited just talking about it, thinking about the stuff that I have. I do not have a Scourge mod. I don't have a Flying Dragon of any kind, so I'm going to have to rectify that, uh, either for the Wood Elves or the Demons. But I definitely want to have all my troop types covered because I think you can do a lot of different fun things with the boards. So uh, I'm super pumped about Age of Magic. If you have questions about what I said, um, I know the new rule book isn't out for a couple weeks, so depending where you are in the world, you might not have it yet. I'm happy to answer questions until you get that into your, your grubby mitts. But otherwise, let me know what you're most excited about for Age of Magic, and we'll have a discussion below. And that's it for now. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you made it to the end of this, um, my, my ramblings here, much appreciated. And I'm going to catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Saga!